please welcome Mary Ade Basan. When my family and I immigrated to the United States from Nigeria, we carried with us more than just suitcases. We carried dreams, hopes for a future built on education and opportunity. But what I didn't know yet was that the key to that future wasn't just academics. It was something schools weren't even teaching yet. In classrooms all across the country, students are being told the same thing. Study hard, get good grades, adhere to the rules and success will follow. But for many, that's not the whole story. Because in today's world, knowledge alone isn't enough. The rules of success have changed. More and more, we see that opportunity isn't just about what you know, it's about what you can create. And in a world that's rapidly becoming digital, technology education is the new literacy. Some students have access to cutting edge resources, coding classes, robotics labs, and even mentorship programs that are opening doors to countless careers. They're building apps, designing websites, and preparing for a future that will be shaped by technology. Meanwhile, in other communities, students sit in classrooms where technology education isn't even an option. They don't lack interest, they lack access. And that's when it becomes clear that the biggest gap in education today isn't about intelligence. It's about opportunity. We live in a world where technology drives virtually everything. How we communicate, how we work, and even how we solve global challenges. But while our future is practically being written in code, far too many students aren't given a chance to be a part of that story. Take for instance, almost 90% of parents say that they want their child to learn computer science. Yet, less than half of the high schools in the United States actually teach the subject. And if you go to a low income school, the chances of having access to a coding class drop exponentially. This isn't just an educational issue, this is a life issue. Because learning computer science is much more than becoming a programmer or working in tech. It's about learning critical thinking skills, about learning to solve problems, about learning to create opportunities, and most importantly, about breaking cycles of inequity in our world through digital solutions. Think about it this way. Technology is virtually shaping our futures, and entire communities are being left out of that discussion. Growing up, I didn't always realize the power technology could have. And for many young students alike, especially girls and students of color, the field of tech seems like a world that isn't meant for them. They don't see mentors who look like them, and they don't hear stories that reflect their own. The tech sphere is seen as something reserved only for the top 1% in Silicon Valley, not for students in everyday classrooms. But when given the chance, that's when everything changes. I've seen students go from never touching a computer before to building their own apps, their own websites, and even online tools in just weeks. Not because they had any distinct special resources, but because for the first time, they had access. And that's why I started Control Code, an organization making sure that students all across the world have access to learning the language of the future. Because when students are given the tools to create, they don't just build apps, they build futures. But here's the reality. What happens when access to these tools isn't even an option? For many underprivileged students, they don't just lack access to computer science classes, they lack computers entirely. That's why I wrote Coding Unplugged, an offline guide to Python programming, a completely hands-on programming book designed to teach students the fundamentals of coding without ever needing a laptop and Wi-Fi. Because if we truly want to break barriers, we need to meet students where they are, not where we expect them to be. And with Control Code, we've been able to distribute this resource to countless students, empowering them to start their coding journey with nothing but a pencil and a desire to learn. Because technology education should never be defined by what you own, but by what you have the power to create. Now you might be thinking, this all sounds important, but does it really affect my daily life? And the answer is a resounding yes. Because again, this isn't just about becoming a programmer or working in tech. This is about who gets to create, who gets to lead, and who's getting left behind. 
Consider this, if you know nothing about technology, you have no voice in how it's shaping your future. If you don't even understand what algorithms are, you can't influence the decisions they're making for you. And if you have no access to these tools, you are being left on the sidelines while others shape the future. This is about representation and influence. Because right now, the future of tech that is constantly evolving our world is practically being designed by a small group of people, those who had access to it from the very start. Meanwhile, millions of students are being left behind, not because they lack potential, but because they lack opportunity. But what if we change that? What if every student, regardless of where they were born or what resources they have, were given the power to learn to innovate and to create. What type of world would we build then? So, how do we fix this? We don't need a billion dollar initiative and we don't need to wait for school systems to catch up. What we need is deliberate action starting now. If you're an educator, advocate for computer science classes in your school, push for access. Even one, child, even one computer science class can change a child's future. I know for sure it changed mine. If you're a student, start learning right now. Don't wait for permission. Utilize libraries and even online resources because computer science can open doors you never thought possible. And if you're a parent or a community leader, invest in technology education, support scholarships, donate laptops, mentor a student. Because real change doesn't always need to start with governments and policies. Real change is built by us. I believe in a world where technology is a right, not a privilege. A world where the next great innovator isn't held back by zip codes, income levels, and even a lack of resources. A world where a young girl like me, living in Lagos, Nigeria, has the same access to learning as a child living in Silicon Valley. And that world, that world starts with us. Thank you. That was 17-year-old high school student, Maria Davison.